And if anybody wants a copy of this slideshow um, afterwards, we certainly can uh, send that off to you. Um, at the very end, you will have a we'll have a, a video with all the graduates, and that's already posted on YouTube, along with the art video that some of you already saw. It was it was supposed to be a secret, and some of you uh, found it yesterday and looked at it, but that's okay. So again, welcome to our, our graduation banquet 2020. We're here to celebrate uh, God's goodness uh, and just the growth of these 30 young, great Christian individuals. And uh, I can't say that enough. Um, this is a, is a special group of kids. So parents, thank you for raising them the right way and uh, guiding them down the paths of uh, righteousness. And uh, I'm, I'm just excited for them to head off into high school uh, because they're gonna they're gonna do great. That is real. Uh, so this is definitely a unique unique time. You know, I don't know if we'll ever get uh, a face mask on a on a graduated graduation banquet uh, type celebration, um, but. We're this that's where we're at and um, I, I appreciate everybody's flexibility even tonight I debated uh, back and forth on should we try to do something in person or not and um, on I erred on the side of caution and I didn't want to put anybody in a position where they might feel uncomfortable being in person and uh, I think we can accomplish uh, what we what we set up tonight, uh, even via zoom so the graduation verse that the eighth graders chose this year was Psalm 1611. Um, if you watched the service, uh, you, you saw that. And it was just a, a fitting verse. And uh, I don't know if they really knowingly picked it uh, with, with everything in mind, but it certainly was a, a perfect, a perfect uh, psalm verse. And uh, I encouraged my message to, to get open the entire chapter, it's just 11 verses. And if you haven't done that, uh, read that. Their class hymn was uh, 10,000 Reasons. And uh, while I'm sad that uh, they couldn't sing it for you because I knew they would have done a great job, we still included that in the service. And uh, their class flower was the blue corn flower. And I didn't really know what this flower looked like until I looked it up. And I thought it was a, a great choice. So there's the, the blue corn flower for them. And their class colors were a navy blue, silver, and white. Uh, very classy. So it's become a tradition at faith for our valedictorian uh, to share with us uh, just, uh, just some memories and also uh, the blessings of Christian education. And uh, normally we have a valedictorian and salutatorian, uh, but this year we had three students that were 4.0, and I have not had that yet uh, since I've been here. Um, so another, just a, a sign of just quality, just quality kids. So to have three kids uh, have a 4.0 their eighth grade year is phenomenal. So that's uh, Jenna Wigan, Leah Tyson, and, and Abby Cole. And so we met uh, some time ago and just talked about um, who would who would take uh, what topic. And this is what we kind of came up with. Uh, Jenna and Leah are going to take us through memories uh, from our time at Faith. And then um, Abby's going to take us through Christian education is, is a blessing. So I'm going to turn it over here to, to Jenna. And uh, Jenna, are you are you live here? I gotta find Jenna. Jenna, can you, are you, if you can unmute, that would be great. I see Pastor Wagon and Mrs. Wagon. Maybe we're having some uh, te technology difficulties there. There's Jenna. Jenna, can you, uh, 
I think you're frozen. Jenna, okay. let's try it again here. I think I think I'm there. I think you're there too. Okay, that's okay. awesome. Kindergarten started in 2011. We were all five and six years old, starting a new journey. Mrs. Wilsman welcomed us in. Some of us were happy and laughing, while others of us were clinging to our parents crying. We all eventually were brave enough to come to school though. We got to see and feed the bunnies, pumpkin and spice. Playtime was the best. A really cool memory from kindergarten was when we celebrated Thanksgiving by getting to dress up as a pilgrim or an Indian. Then we got to eat a Thanksgiving meal in our homemade costumes. Like the rest of ki kindergarten, it was a blast. In first grade, we gained Evan but lost Marissa. Mrs. Neubauer, Mrs. Lauer was there for us every day with a smile. Just a small but memorable moment from first grade was that instead of saying the Pledge of Allegiance every day, like we would for the next several years, we'd sing it. That year, we participated in the Faith Olympics with our chapel teams. Mrs. Lauber also taught us about handwriting with Messy Fred and Neat Sam. The by far most memorable fire drill occurred in first grade. We were headed to the door with Mrs. Lauber when she tripped and fell over the gym shoes bin. She told us to go outside the door and follow the other classes. Instead, most of us stood in the classroom panicking. While well, a few of us went and told all of the teachers out in the hallway what had happened, it was chaos. Thankfully, it was just a drill, not a real fire. In second grade, Lexi left the class. Mrs. Miller was a, was a fun teacher who really loved the Green Bay Packers. Fridays were the best when everyone were green and gold so we could get extra recess. Wednesdays were also exciting because Mrs. Miller allowed us to watch the Hump Day commercial. That year, we got to participate in the musical Go Go Jonah, and we went to the zoo and a Skippy John Jones play. One fun, memorable thing we did in second grade was the journey journals. Each of us wrote in and decorated a journal, then we sent it off to someone we knew. Their job was to fill in a page, send a postcard to us at school, and then send the journal to someone else. Our journals traveled all over the country. It was a really fun activity. In third grade, we gained Lauren, Ava, Grace, and Sylvia. Mrs. Wilsman was our teacher again because she moved up from kindergarten. She had another bunny, Coco Puff, who we got to take care of. We did the play Go Fish that year. It was the very first musical where we actually got speaking parts. Third grade was also the year we could finally play basketball. On April Fool's Day, we kicked Mrs. Wilsman out of the room and made confetti out of paper from a leftover art project. We threw it all around the classroom and on her when she walked in. I think we surprised her. Another surprise was when Lauren fell asleep in class and didn't wake up for a while. Mrs. Wilsman figured she was tired, so no one woke her up. Another memorable moment was when Abby Wagon Connect accidentally let the frog she had brought for science class get loose. We were all trying to get it. We scrambled out of our desks to close the door and catch the frog. After quite the chase, we finally caught it. One of our field trips in third grade was going to a train museum and then going on a tour of Lambeau Field. It was super fun. A random memory we have of Mrs. Wilsman is that she would always rack back and forth heel to toe when she read us a story. It seems like a strange thing to remember, but we do. Fourth grade started and we gained Haley and kindness and then Louie came midway through. Sadly, we lost Abby. Mrs. Neubauer was our wonderful teacher who hated technology, and we knew it. 
Whenever we could tell she was stressed with technology, we would yell, I hate technology, for her. That year, we got to do all sorts of cool music-related things. We played bucket drums for the Fine Arts Fair and Pep Rally. We got to record ourselves for Joyful Praise, and it was made into a CD. We also did the musical Wing It. An unforgettable memory from history class was when Grant got fired. We were learning about the assembly line and pretending to work in a clothing assembly line. To demonstrate what happened if a worker didn't work properly or went on strike, Grant was fired from the assembly line and history class. Another memory we had was Ben winning the handwriting contest. I'd won for the past three years and everyone else was very excited that somebody had finally beat me. When the class heard Ben had won, they cheered and were really excited. Fourth grade was definitely memorable. And then Leah will do grades five through eight. In fifth grade, we gained Bennett, but lost Sylvia midway through the school year. Mr. Walter was our main teacher, and Mrs. Lippert helped us out until she had a baby. That was the year we could finally do other sports, forensics, band, and flex on Fridays. Also on Fridays, we read the Scholastic newspaper. We sometimes got to act as newscasters and put on a show based on the art, which we really enjoyed. When preparing for a test, we sometimes played Family Feud or other trivia games, which we all enjoyed. We read to our first grade book buddies, and sometimes they even read to us. We also did the play Shootbox Time Machine, where Ava rocked it at being Roxy. A few kids wrote scripts and for performed two other plays, The Daughter of Jairus and Lazarus, for Christlight that year. We had several field trips that year. Brewer Weather Day, the fire station with the burning house, the Wade House, and WLA Visitation Day. On Brewer Weather Day, we had to cheer especially loud for Eric Thames since it's his opening day. At the fire station, some of us got to call 911 and talk to a real operator. It was strange but cool at the same time. At the Wade House, Jenna and Elijah killed Timmy. Hopefully, they never become real doctors or surgeons. During WLA Visitation Day, it was neat to see some of the different classes and be in high school. In sixth grade, we gained Abby. For Phi Ed, one of our units was bowling. And on the last day of the unit, we went to Ledgeview Lane to put our new bowling skills into action. Some of us were in seventh grade math that year. And if you were in it, you'd remember that according to Mr. Rosenthal, everything that happened was Ben's fault. That year, Vogan and Sebastian wrote their own plays and some of us participated in it. <coughs> while others did a play from Mr. Zunker. Both plays were interesting. In sixth grade, we also got to go to the Dells and a submarine museum. At the Dells, we rode on the ducks and went mini golfing. It was pouring rain, so we got drenched. We also got to eat at McDonald's, which was uh, amazing. The submarine museum was full of boats and pictures of boats, but the real highlight was touring an actual submarine. Though it looked huge, the sub was quite cramped. One of the funniest memories from sixth grade happened when we were practicing for our musical, Go West. We were singing one of the songs and Mr. Zunker got really into it. It was hilarious. It was also quite funny when he filled in for Ava and raced his imaginary horse during practice. For some of us, it wasn't our favorite musical, but it did have some awesome rehearsals. Seventh grade came along with the legendary Mr. Rosenthal. Loads of science videos, lots of Shakespeare, and a really cold room. That year, we gained Riley and Avery, and Lexi came back. During the year, we got to study different musicals and go caroling with Mrs. Rosenthal. We also got to watch some exciting movies based on books we had read, like Freak the Mighty, The Giver, and Where the Red Fern Grows. For a seventh grade field trip, we went to the Space Museum and saw and did some interesting things. We went to the planetarium where we ate nitrogen teddy grams, which made it look like smoke was coming out of our mouths. Going through the galaxy in 3D was a neat experience we also did there. After the planetarium, we went to Sky Zone. Most of us ended up playing some crazy dodgeball games. Near the end of the school year, Mr. Rosenthal accepted a call to South Dakota. We were finally, we were really sad that he was leaving but we're also thankful to have him as a teacher. Finally, our eighth grade year came, and we were now the oldest kids at school. This year, we gained Chop, Layla, and Cassandra, but we sadly lost Sebastian and Grace 
and then Riley midway through. Mrs. Liddy and Mr. Herkstrader were very fun teachers. With Mr. H, we got to enjoy intramurals on Friday and football picks. With Mrs. Weedy, we got to do we got to sing songs in music class and had really creative math classes, which were pretty fun. We also had the most memorable field trips. We went to see West Side Story and a Christmas Carol in Milwaukee. We were able to take a backstage tour and fooled the guide into believing that Mr. H was Principal Bob. The camp fill up and skiing trips were the most fun. That night playing Mission 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 Impossible at Camp Phillip was impossible. Even though we were in some pretty awesome disguises, at Little Switzerland, we got to see each of us grow in our knowledge of skiing. It was fun to see some of us falling on the bunny hill at the beginning and then going down the black diamond slopes like a pro. During the fire truck was also a neat experience that we got to do since we made joy baskets for the firefighters. A moment in history, history class, is we all remember, is when we heard a gunshot coming from the principal's office. We all jumped and were pretty confused, along with Mr. Waldo. We sat there in silence for about two minutes while Mr. Waldo was looking around. Then Mrs. Witty told us Mr. H was having a meeting. We don't think it was a meeting, but I guess we'll never know for sure. Sadly, however, the last quarter of our year was spent not attending school inside Faith Lutheran. We had to attend virtually due to the COVID-19 pandemic. We had to see our teachers and friends via Zoom meetings. We missed out on more memories of softball, track meets, musicals, singing, and special field trips. We are now the first class at Faith Lutheran School to have a virtual online confirmation and graduation. Who would have ever thought that possible? Throughout all our years at Faith Lutheran, we have been blessed with amazing teachers who have encouraged us spiritually and academically. These years have been memorable and filled with fun. While we are sad to be leaving Faith, we are excited to start a new journey on to high school. Thank you, Jenna. Thank you, Leah. Nice job to both of you. Fun trip down memory lane. And all, all I'll say about the principal office is what happens in the principal office stays in the principal office. So you'll, you'll never know what that was. Um, hey, just a reminder to everyone, make sure the volume is up on your computer or device so that you can hear it clearly. And then you should have a, an option. I know on mine, it's the upper right-hand corner. If you click on speaker view, then uh, whoever is uh, speaking, then that enlarges the, the picture and just focuses on them. All right, so I think Abby, uh, are you ready? Thumbs up. All right, let's turn it over to, to Abby. My classmates and I have been blessed with Christian education in varying degrees. Some of us have attended a Christian school for all of our schooling, whereas Others have been attending a Christian school for only a couple of years. Whatever the case may be, Christian education is very important. Christian education prepares students for life and eternity. At Faith Lutheran School, our mission statement is, Faith Lutheran School partners with parents in providing a Christ-centered education that prepares students for life and eternity. We are exposed to God's word not only during religion class and devotion, but during all the other classes as well. We are taught how to handle the different curveballs that life throws at us from a Christian perspective. It is always important to put God number one in our lives. Teachers set good Christian examples for us. They show us how to manage our earthly lives while still keeping God at the center of all we do. Although we may not enjoy it at the time, they discipline us out of Christian love to teach us lessons that we may need later in life. Not only are we taught by faithful Christian teachers, but we also learn alongside fellow Christian peers. We can greatly, greatly relate to one another because we may, go, go, we may be going through the same struggles in our physical and spiritual lives. These strong Christian bonds that we form with one another are a very great and wonderful thing. Through tough times, such as now with the virus, these Christian bonds are a very comforting thing to hold on to. We are not alone in this world. Not only do we have support from fellow believers, but we have God on our side as well. What a comforting thing it is to have the one who creates and sustains all things there for us at all times. God works all things for our good. Throughout all of our classes, even online classes, we are constantly encouraged and comforted with these words along with the rest of the Bible. As we move on to high school and beyond, the Christ-centered foundation we have received of faith 
will not just be a thing of the past. Rather, our Christ-centered, our Christ-centered foundation will hopefully shine through in our daily actions in life as we continue to stay firm and grow in the faith. Abby, awesome job. Thank you. Hey, um, I don't know if uh, anybody else has reactions, but uh, you can, on your screen uh, down below, you can click on reactions and you can do a little hand clap uh, for these, these ladies. You see it on my screen. If you can find it on yours, uh, go ahead and give them a round of applause. Uh, great job, Abby. Good mature message. And it wouldn't be authentic unless uh, we had a little cameo appearance by one of the little cool kids. Uh, so that was fun too. All right, I'm gonna go back here to our slideshow and we're gonna keep progressing on here. All right, so every year we recognize students uh, academically in a number of ways, uh, one of which is the Presidential Academic Award. And in order for a student to earn this honor, and this is an honor only earned by uh, eighth grade graduates, um, this award recognizes academic achievement. To earn this award, students must score in the 81st percentile or higher on the fall eighth grade map test in the areas of map and reading and maintain a 90% in all academic subjects during seventh grade and quarters one, two, and three of eighth grade year. Uh, this year's Presidential Academic Award achievers are uh, Abby Cole, Grant Lidke, Bennett Midtoon, Ava Petrowitz, Leah Tyson, Jenna Wigan. Uh, congratulations to them. You can give them a, a thumbs up or a, or a round of applause with uh, your little uh, symbols there that you can click on Zoom. Uh, excellent job. Uh, Abby, Grant, Bennett, Ava, Leah, Jenna, I have a pin for you that I will uh, get delivered to you in the, in the near future. So awesome job. Another tradition that we have at, at Faith uh, with our graduation banquet is just awarding um, and recognizing fine arts and specifically um, visual arts. Uh, we are tremendously blessed at uh, Faith to, to be able to have a full-time uh, or almost a full-time art teacher. She, she's actually uh, part-time, but she puts in full-time hours. Uh, Mrs. Kemnitz just has a passion for art. And if you're ever in our hallways, um, you uh, appreciate just the work that she does. And our art lab has just been a tremendous blessing. Um, it's just uh, awesome to be able to provide a, a well-rounded education for our kids and, and art, visual arts are one of those ways. Uh, so we're gonna click, I'm gonna click on a video here and we're gonna watch uh, Mrs. Chemnitz and another area artist uh, talk about uh, some pieces that rose to the top for them as they uh, looked over eighth grade artwork and uh, give some awards. All right, so here we go. And that was your stained glass mosaic. All the Congratulations, class of 2020. Wow, what a year we had this year. And what an unexpected, surprising ending, filled with all kinds of challenges. You know what? The Lord gave us a lot of strength, a lot of wisdom, and we were able to get through this all. So we have a lot to be grateful for. You've been very blessed to be in a Christian school that paid high regard to God's word in everything we did, including the fine arts program. It was a wonderful thing to watch your light shining for Jesus in everything you did, even in all your artwork. As your instructor, I appreciated your thoughtfulness, your dedication to your work, your politeness. You were very respectful. And you know, that made our art room a very fun place 
to create. Thank you very much. So this year, you were challenged with a number of art projects. Let's start with the very first one. You were given a 12 by 12 inch piece of wood, and you had to transform that into a creation collage. You did a great job with that. Thank you. The second one was you studied an American landscape artist, um, a Midwestern landscape artist named Grant Wood, and you painted your own landscapes. Great job, kids. The third one was I introduced you to printmaking tools, and then you applied the knowledge that you learned and successfully created Christmas prints. The last project we were working with before our break was probably the most challenging project, and that was your stained glass mosaics. I want to show you one of them. Ava Petrowitz was able to finish hers, except for the frame. It's a beautiful tulip. And here is Lexi Ryan's beautiful cross. I was really sad when we had to um, not come to school anymore. I, our goal was to finish these in March. But the good news is that we're saving some days in July and August probably for you to come into the classroom and finish these glass mosaics. Your family would really love to have these in your homes. So it was incredibly rewarding for me as a teacher to see you persevere through all of the challenges that you had and to see you growing as an artist. Thanks to you, our hallways weren't brown or gray. They were filled with color and inspiration. Your best works and hung them up in the art room and in the hallway. And then I had my good art friend, Alice Kazakis, come and evaluate them. And then we selected a third place winner, a second place winner, and a fourth place winner. Um, I'm, Alice, would you like to? She'll, she'll step up in just a minute. Um, Alice is a fantastic artist, lives in the Fond du Lac area, and has taught for a number of years in the North Fond du Lac School District as the art teacher. So I really value her um, opinions about our art. So let's get started with our third place winner this year. Um, this is called Wooly Mammoth and it is by Lauren Everett. First I want to tell you I'm delighted to talk to you again. We had so much fun last year when we did our books. It was uh, incredibly magical and whenever I come to walk down the halls I am always thrilled to see all the wonderful artwork and Mrs. Kemnitz had put rows and rows of artwork for me to look at and it was always it always is challenging to pick a winner because every piece is wonderful in and by itself but um, I had to do it. So, so this is the woolly mammoth, and I'm going to tell you first. Watercolor is what I call my wild child. Watercolor is a very, very challenging medium. A lot of times it'll get muddy, it'll get scrubbed away. It just needs to be quick and free and magical and rich in color. And this is what we have here in this delightful woolly mammoth, and I. The drawing of the mammoth is just perfect for the size of the paper. And then what I really, really like is the use of light right here. And then the shadows. And these shadows are the way a shadow should be because it's rich and dark here and then they fade away. It doesn't look like there was any like scrubbing, which is intuitive and um, incredibly well done for watercolor and the rich blues and purples blend wonderfully and I tend to think that this artist 
maybe even wanted to accentuate a little bit of value change because this looks like it was gently dabbed. Um, a wonderful composition, a delightful work of our art, and a great use of watercolor because watercolor is just perfect if you let it do what it needs to do. And this artist did. So very well done. Our second place winner this year by Jenna Weigand called Ocean Octopus. It is an oil pastel work. Oil pastels are incredible because you can get those really wonderful rich colors that you can get with oil painting. And this is incredibly well and it's Jenna, right? Okay, so, so Jenna, you're a step ahead of me because I never saw an oil pastel till my freshman year in college. And when I first used them, I went, oh, these are so cool, I love them. And your colors are the way oil pastels should be. They're rich, they're, they're very vibrant, your octopus is definitely your center of attention, and actually there are two people in this show that I want to talk about as far as use of birds. And Jenna, you did it. Um, the, the rule of thirds, and it's used most often in photography, um, is that you divide your your composition into thirds this way and then into thirds this way. And then your focal point is where one of those grids meets. So it could be here, 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 or here. So you put your focal point where it just, your eye goes right there. You gave us a nice quiet place for the eye rest, which is very important. Value changes, really good use of shadow so that you can tell this is darker so that that's behind. So it's very, very obvious. And then I have to tell you, what really just, oh, just went all oh, icing on the cake. These little stores out here, they're very consistent and they're delightful and they're unexpected. And in a really good work of art, my theory always is, put something in there that you would least expect. I didn't expect those. And they just tickled me. And then you have nice value changes and light with your, and just enough, not too much. Sometimes people want to clutter the composition up. So very, very well done. And awesome use of oil pastel. I love it. So this year we had a large third grade, third grade, a large eighth grade class. And so we have two first place winners this year. The first one is a rural landscape in the style of Grant Wood. And it was done by Melena Dins. Congratulations, Melena. So, Melina, we will start it again. There you go. Divide, 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 divide. Focal point. Perfect. I, and I totally, totally love whatever colors you mix to get that shade of red. Because if, if, when your red comes out of your tube or wherever you get your red from, it's usually way too bright. So you usually brown it down a little with a compliment. I'm not sure if that's what you did, but just putting a little bit of green in that red would do, give you that tone. You have a great light source. It's incredibly consistent. You've got your shadows coming here, shadows coming there, shadows coming there. This glow in this sky is pure magic. Because what you did was you created that soft, subtle color off in the distance. Sometimes when people do their horizon lights, even though sometimes it is truly that bright, 
it takes away from the the composition. This is like a soft, easy feel, which you would see in a, in a composition like this. And then you have your light source consistent with your tree, your tree, but just perfect. And you created a, like a smooth pastoral effect. It's quiet, it's calm, it's serene and green. My art teacher in high school used to say, Think of green like poison. Now, when I was young, we had the Mr. Yuck Green stickers, and that was you used to stick them on things that were poison. You're probably way too that they probably don't have those anymore, I don't think, but they did when I was around. And so that would always remind me be careful with green, be careful with green. You did a lovely job with that green, it is wonderful. And you, you toned it down and you created. The value changes as you move through here. It's less is more, and you create a composition that can really work in and by itself. And a tribute to that thing. So, Melina, your work will be taken to the frame and gallery shop, and it will be framed, and we'll put a little place on the bottom that says your name in the class of 2020. Play to honor. And our other first place winner was a printmaking project done by Alice Kaifenheim. I name it Love Came Down. Congratulations, Alice. Oh my goodness, I didn't know the names of the students. I have taught for over 40 years and have never had a student. So there we go. Printmaking is such an interesting process. And for you to have to go through all those steps, at first you have to come up with your design, carve it away and think negative, positive shape. And uh, once you do that, well, first the design, then you do the carving, then you do the printing, the inking. You have to have just enough ink, just enough pressure. But what you've done here, Alice, is you have created, I looked at this and I went, and this is kind of nice, and I said, what could be on the cover? And when I judge artwork, I always walk away and it holds up. It's such a strong composition. You've got your focal point, the light, it's bright, it really makes, it sends a message. This message is very, very powerful. And, and it comes down into the, the crush. And then this nice, quiet, dark area balances every, everything. Graphically, this is an incredibly strong composition. And I could see that, I, I could see that on a professional book or missile or anything. Uh, so excellent job. Oh, and everything else. Art is joyful. It brings joy to your hearts. And we can all be creative. We might not all choose to be uh, uh, working with visual arts hands on. You can be creative with the way you design buildings. You can be creative the way you dance or play your musical instruments. This is just one form of creativity that one of them. A great job to, to all our artists and uh, special congratulations to Milena and Alice. We'll look uh, forward to seeing those pieces up I think the video got cut off just a little bit at the end, but there were just some final remarks there. Um, so great job to all of you. Um, I'm going to continue to share screen here. Sorry, uh, Abby. Okay. 
And uh, now it's time to uh, play a little game here. We're going to have a little fun. So uh, you can play on your, your uh, device that you're on or um, your phone. We're going to play some Kahoot tonight, and we're going to figure out who knows uh, these graduates the best. All right, so uh, give me a moment here, and I'll get it set up. And you're going to need to log in with a, with a, um, with a special code. Give me one minute here, getting it set up. All right, so give uh, give everyone a moment here to, to log in. You can go to www.kahoot it or uh, Kahoot app. Please be respectful with the name that you uh, put in. Parents, grandparents, feel free to join in too. If you've got a phone, it's pretty easy to, to log in. Looks like we've got 38 players, 39 players. I want to see at least over 50. Fifty-one, fifty-two. Awesome. Who's the Vikings fan? Must be a mid tune. All right, 60 seconds here, 60 seconds. If you're gonna log in, let's get her done. Mr. Hack, join in the party. Welcome, buddy. Ten seconds. All right, looks like we've got about 62 players here. All right, so um, I will read the, the description. And then you'll have 10 seconds to make a choice. You'll have four choices each time. You need to, you need to decide uh, who it is that we're describing here. All right, 66 players here. Let's go. This graduate is ambidextrous, wants to be a structural engineer, and ran down a mountainside covered in 10 feet of snow.
That is our very own Louis Schultz. All right, good job. 39 of you had it correct. Uh, you got the hang of it now. So uh, on your phones or whatever, you'll just see the, the red, the blue, the gold, the green associated with the name. Uh, you'll also see that shape, like red is a triangle, the gold is a circle, blue is a diamond, green is a square. All right, so you got to be quick here. Here we go. Next one. We have a total of 31 questions. Teach Witty on top. This graduate loves getting muddy and four-wheeling, once broke family heirloom china, and would love to be an actress. Typo there. That's right, Cassandra Gudex. Abby jumps to the top, Jenna in second place, Olivia third place, here we go. This graduate got glasses at 18 months old, has parasailed in the Gulf of Mexico, and wants to be a radiologist. Natalie Kane, 33 of you got it correct. Hey, notice that if you don't pick it up, uh, the description right away, it is, shows up here at the, the top. Abby stays in the lead. Here we go. This graduate enjoys designing houses, would like to make an app for designing rooms, and wants to be an architect. Only 22 of you got it right. I always learn something in this too, and I did not know that about Eli. Uh, so Eli, uh, architect, I think that's an awesome, awesome goal. All right, we've got a new leader. Elena jumps to the top. This graduate has eaten fiscabullers, once saved someone from drowning and would like to be a doctor. Only six got this one right. Layla Wilson. Hey, saving someone from drowning. That's incredible. And if you don't know what a fiscal bowler is, I uh, got to look it up. All right, here we go. Elena still in the lead. Melena jumps to second place. Abby, hot on their trail. Where are the guys here? Come on, guys. This graduate loves McDonald's, does not like roller coasters, and wants to be a teacher. Looks like most people got that one right, Samantha Miller. Sam, I guess there are no secrets with you. Leaderboard doesn't change much. Here we go. This graduate has eaten snails, would like to create a book rating app and, be, and become a pediatrician or an obstetrician. That's right, Ava Petrowitz. Hey, good job. Hey, eighth graders, just so you know, there's a limit on just how much I could type in here. So some of these I have to kind of condense. So this app idea by Ava sounded really interesting. So not only does she want to create an app in which you can, you know, uh, rate books, but also recommend them and have chats. I think it's a clever idea. All right, here we go. Question number eight. This graduate enjoys cooking and baking, shot his first year three years ago, and would create a free app to share Jesus. Caden Schmitz, that's right. Awesome. I love uh, the mission-mindedness there, Caden. Nice job. 
Olivia's on fire. Got to catch her. This graduate would like to be a professional hunter or fisherman, has eaten mahi-mahi, and has been to Hawaii. Most of you got it. That's right, Elijah Jujinski. I just uh, visited Elijah, you know, along with the rest of you in a, at his grandpa's place and saw a lot of different mounts out there. And I'm sure he'll add to that collection. Good to see Big Ben here making a climb, getting a guy in the in at least the top five. All right, here we go. This graduate has never been on a Ferris wheel, has whitewater rafted in the Grand Canyon, and eaten a caribou hot dog. Most of you had it right. Yeah, Jenna. Jenna, what type of parents do you have? They won't take you on a Ferris wheel, but they'll put you on a whitewater raft? Crazy. All right, here we go. This graduate likes deer hunting, has eaten seaweed, and would like to be a pediatric nurse who treats blood disorders. Yeah, most of you got that one, Chelsea Ferguson. Hey, there's not uh, many people that would mix deer hunting with being a pediatric nurse. Uh, nice job, Chelsea, I like it. Olivia still holding strong. This graduate once ate the world's hottest chip, loves to sleep and would like to work for his dad's business someday. Jack Karst, that's right. Jack, thanks for uh, being awake for us tonight. All right, here we go. Carr, is that Carson? Carson's uh, making it up to the, the top five. And look at Big Ben making the climb. Olivia's still holding strong. This graduate has visited 24 states and three countries, has eaten squid, and would like to be a teacher. Lexi Ryan. I did not know Lexi had traveled that much. And I don't know uh, what countries she has, uh, she's all visited. Lexi, where have you all been? Um, the Bahamas, um, America, what? Canada, and America. <laughs> <laughs> America? We live in America. Yeah. All right. Welcome, Yuri. All right, here we go. This graduate has a fear of feet, once broke a fish tank, which resulted in all its fish dying and has eaten alligator. Twenty-three of you got it right. Yeah, Melena. Now, Melena's description of the fish tank was a little bit more in detail. I couldn't put it all in there, but she talked about destroying this fish tank and uh, the habitat and all the fish in the tank being uh, just uh, totally wiped out. Um, I'm sure that whoever owned the fish tank was not happy about that. This graduate's first word was the name of a vacuum has gone deep sea fishing and wants to become an architect. Twenty-eight, if you got it right, Bennett Midtune. Hey, Bennett, what was the name of the vacuum, which was your first word? Roomba. Nice. <laughs> We just got one of those. We love it. 
All right, here we go. This graduate thinks pickles are weird, cried when he first started playing football, and broke a window twice. The big tough guy, Chop, cried when he first started playing football. The rest of the story is, I guess the helmet was uh, making him uncomfortable and he didn't like it. Uh, I don't think you'll see him uh, crying too much these days on the football field. All right, not too much change in the leaderboard. You got the Kane girls both in the top five. This graduate would like to become an anesthesiologist, once caught a 40 pound fish and was in dance for five years. Evan Donnell. I want to see a picture of the, uh, the 40 pound fish. That's a big fish. It was probably out on uh, Chesapeake Bay is my guess. I know you guys go fishing out there. All right, here we go. This graduate would like to be a sports commentator, won a baseball skill competition at Miller Park and ate alligator. Yeah, most of you got it. Avery Supernan, sports commentator. I can't wait to see you on ESPN. Oh, we got sisterly competition here. This graduate loves skiing, would like to create an app called You Art, and dreams of playing in the NBA. Yeah, Ellis Geifenheim. Uh, the U art there fits in well with his um, first place finish. This is a really clever idea. I like it. Instead of YouTube, I have an app called U art. This graduate visited the Kentucky Derby site, would like to be a teacher and create an app to make summer last forever. Yeah, Olivia Kane. Hey, Olivia, if you can get that app figured out, I'll be the first one in line to buy it. All right, here we go. This graduate has never broken anything expensive, once owned chickens, and would like to become a nurse. Yes, the very careful kindness Lang. I'll have to check with your mom and see if that is really true that you've never broken anything expensive. Twenty-two of thirty-one. This graduate once got her head stuck between railings. Wants to be a pro soccer player and create an app to do laundry. Hey, I guess uh, that story about your head being stuck between the railings, Leah, most people know. That happened in Arizona. I'd like to see a, a picture of it. Leah, did uh, your parents take a photo of that? Yes. Yes, they did. Ah, I want to see that sometime. Okay. Holy smokes, Olivia is about to break the 20,000 mark here. All right, the rest of you, quick fingers here. Let's go. This graduate played in the softball world series, has eaten seaweed chips and broke a snow globe at the Disney store. Yeah, that's right, Abby Cole. Abby, I wanna know, did you have to buy that snow globe?
<laughs> we didn't, but my mom ended up buying one because she felt bad. <laughs> nice. I'm sure it's a, a Christmas piece that uh, brings you a lot of joy. All right, here we go. This graduate has a large coin collection, has eaten chocolate covered bacon, and will, would like to run a large company as its founder. Yes, future CEO, Logan Puck. I think he's got the, the talent to do it. Um, hey, that large coin collection, Logan, uh, let's not share that with anybody else, okay? So whoever knows about that now, you can't tell anybody. All right, here we go. This graduate would like to create an app that makes food, won the wall three-point contest, and dreams of playing NBA ball someday. Oh man, we gave it away too too easily, Carson. They got it. Most of you got it. Carson Slimmer. It was awesome watching him uh, win the three point contest. All right, only a few more questions left. Will Olivia, hang on. This graduate would like to be a vet tech. Has ridden all the big roller coasters at Great America and has eaten crab. Yes, thrill seeker Claire. I would have not thought that Claire would uh, love to ride roller coasters. Awesome. Woo, we have uh, Big Ben making a charge. This graduate pulled four Gs in a glider, once ate a stick, and dreams of being a US Army combat engineer. Ben Stuckey. Ben, how big was this stick? It was a it decent was a size. <laughs> <laughs> Would you recommend uh, eating a stick again to anyone? Definitely. <laughs> All right, that's good. And I figured uh, Big Ben would take the lead on that one. Olivia. All right, girl, you've got a challenge. Emily second, climbing up. This graduate has eaten carambola, dreams of teaching or nursing, and each family member was born in a different state. I think I accidentally gave you extra time on that one. Yeah, most of you got it, Lauren. So carambola is also known as star fruit, in case you were wondering. Ooh, here we go. Big Ben's on fire, 29 to 31. This graduate would like to be a SVU detective, has the only green eyes in her family and likes to jet ski. Yeah, many of you got it. The quiet Haley Barr as a detective might be a good fit. All right, here we go. This graduate is named after a president, wants to be an engineer and trade stocks, and survived hot lunch cheese pizza. Mr. Grant Lidkey. Now a little bit of story behind this cheese pizza thing. So I asked the kids, you know, what's the weirdest thing you've ever eaten? 
And Grant says the weirdest things he, he's ever eaten is, is the cheese pizza in our hot lunchroom. Interesting. I think we are down to our final question here. Um, Will, Big Ben, hang on. Will, Olivia, make the comeback here. Here we go. The one thing we want each of our graduates to remember as they move on to high school. Yeah, that's right. While never looking up at a flock of birds with your open mouth is super important, not as important as knowing Jesus as your Savior. 51 of you, uh, great job. All right, here we go. Nice job, Natalie. Olivia, Sister Power. And Big Ben does it. Hey, that was fun. Thank you for playing here. And uh, we have uh, just a little bit more here. Let me get back to where I wanna be. And this is uh, our second to last slide here tonight. And this is the eighth grade slideshow. It's about 10 minutes here and it'll take you through a trip down memory lane with the kids as we uh, see them from when they were little all the way up to, to eighth grade. And uh, you may want to get a box of tissues nearby uh, ready to go because uh, you might have a, a couple tears, parents and kids. All right, so here we go.
Space and time, all of every love. I am in awe of all you have sacrificed. And when once was slain, you bore our cross and rescued us from the grave. Thank you. 
I'm Faith Chemnitz. I'm one of the art instructors here at Faith Lutheran School. Sorry about that. Hey, uh, thank you to Mrs. Ferguson for all the time she put into, into that video. Uh, parents, thanks for submitting photos. Thank you, uh, Dave Finn and uh, his witness for supplying the music for that. Um, that was an awesome video. So that's posted on, on our Faith YouTube channel. So you can access it uh, anytime. Um, if you want the, the, the actual file, um, I can send that to you as well. Just uh, email me. Um, I just want to thank everybody again for taking time out of their evening to get together. While we can't be physically together, we're still, we're still together. And um, we're, we're uh, celebrating uh, you know, the, the growth of these students, awesome kids. And while it's been a unique, unique year, you know, one thing stays the same, and that's uh, God and his love for us. Um, so while we can't see each other in person tonight, I look forward to the, the time that we can be together again uh, in church. And uh, families, uh, you know, just because your eighth grader is graduating faith does not mean that uh, uh, you graduate from our church. Um, it's more... It's even more important as your kids are into high school that uh, you get them up and get them to church and uh, worship as a family on a, on a weekly basis. So I look forward to uh, communing with all of you and, and growing in God's word and uh, just worshiping our Lord together and then seeing you around out and about uh, wherever that may be. All right, so tonight we're going to close with a blessing. This will be our, our final uh, thought for tonight. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace.
with that then, uh, we'll close our, our uh, graduation banquet and uh, have a peaceful and restful night. And we hope to see you all soon again.